If your raised bed looks healthy on the surface but feels lifeless underneath, no worms, no crumbling texture, no earthy smell, then you're missing the most important workforce your garden could have, earthworms. They aren't just soil creatures, they're ecosystem engineers. And while compost and mulch help, sometimes your garden needs a much more direct signal to wake up underground life. That's where today's method comes in. It's gooey, it's sticky, it even stinks a little, but it works like magic. When used correctly, this one simple mixture pulls earthworms into dead soil faster than traditional compost, turning your raised beds into living, tunneling, moisture-holding ecosystems. Stick around because what we're about to show you is easy, natural, and honestly, it's shockingly effective even if your garden's been, you know, silent for years. A raised bed without worms is a stagnant bed. You might add compost, top dress with mulch, even rotate your crops. But if the soil underneath lacks living movement, water just won't penetrate well, nutrients stay locked up, and your plants will never reach their full potential. The truth is, compost alone doesn't always bring worms especially in dry climates, urban gardens, or compacted raised beds, the microbes and moisture signals simply aren't strong enough to call them in. That's why gardeners in tough zones are turning to what we call, um, bait composting. Not fancy worm bins, not buying worm castings, but creating an irresistible, nutrient-dense, sticky food source directly in the soil, one that mimics the rich decay worms love in the wild. And the star ingredient? Well, it's a mix that most people throw away or honestly are just too squeamish to use. Here's the real secret. Earthworms don't want just compost. They want active fermentation, the kind that gives off heat, scent, and yeah, even a bit of slime. That's why this mix begins with overripe fruit. Bananas, mango peels, papayas, or even old pawpaws. Anything soft, sugary, and really on the edge of rotting. These sugary scraps begin breaking down quickly, creating the kind of microbe-rich slime that signals food to underground life. But it doesn't stop there. The magic comes when you mash those fruits and blend them with wet cardboard shreds or paper pulp. The combination creates a fibrous, slow-rotting matrix that holds moisture and clings to soil particles, perfect for fungi, bacteria, and worms to feed on. This mixture becomes sticky, stringy, and smells mildly fermented within days. To supercharge it further, some gardeners add a dash of used coffee grounds or a small handful of aged manure. Not much, just enough to kickstart microbial bloom. Once the mix starts to rot in a bucket or sealed bag, wait until it turns sour and slightly bubbly, about three to five days in warm weather. Then it's ready. Don't dig up your whole bed. Just choose a section and create a shallow trench, no more than 3 to 4 inches deep. This is where you'll deposit your sticky bait. Once it's in, lightly cover it with a thin layer of aged compost or spent straw. Not too thick, just enough to mask the scent from pests while still allowing airflow. The goal is to let the mix decompose in situ, right in the root zone, while feeding microbes and drawing in worms from surrounding soil. Within a few days to a week, you'll notice signs. Soil will darken around the trench. Moisture will hold longer in that area. And if you dig nearby after two weeks, you'll start seeing earthworm tunnels, often for the first time in beds that had stayed dry and compacted for months. This isn't just worm food, it's an awakening. Worms come for the scent, but they stay for the biology. That sticky mash doesn't just attract them, it creates a fungal and bacterial explosion that, you know, fuels their gut health and boosts their reproduction. As the worms feed, they leave behind castings rich in nitrogen, humic acids, and growth hormones for your plants. Their tunnels aerate clay, hold water during dry spells, and allow roots to reach deeper. What starts as one fermented deposit becomes a whole living patch of activity that transforms the bed from the inside out. In a few months, the area you fed becomes the healthiest zone in the garden. Water soaks deeper. Plants perk up. 
Pests often decrease as beneficial organisms move in, all from something as simple as, well, rotting fruit and cardboard. This trick is especially powerful when used in rotation. Each week, move the sticky bait trench to a new part of the bed. Over time, the entire garden becomes colonized, not just by worms, but by the right microbial allies they bring with them. It's kind of like laying down a trail for soil life to follow. In the wild, forest floors are covered in fruit rot, fallen leaves, and animal scat. That's what keeps ecosystems alive without anyone adding bagged compost or tilling. This method imitates that natural decay, right inside your raised bed. It's not pretty, it's not clean, but, you know, the results are undeniable. If you've tried everything else to improve your soil, this may be the missing link. And unlike store-bought solutions, it costs nothing. It uses scraps you'd normally throw out. And it doesn't require any turning, flipping, or mixing once buried. Just make it, feed it, and watch the worms do the work. Don't be afraid to experiment. Start with one bucket of sticky mash. Pick the toughest, driest corner of your bed. Bury it shallow. Come back in a week and see if the soil feels different, softer, cooler, maybe even alive, because chances are the worms will have found it and they won't be leaving anytime soon. If this trick worked in your garden or you're planning to try it, hit the like button, drop a comment, and share this with a fellow gardener who's tired of dead soil. And don't forget to subscribe to Hydrohaven for more down-to-earth gardening hacks that actually get results. We'll be back with more soon.